Welcome back. So today we have something a little different. We're going to make an ingredient to make beer, not beer itself. So today I'm making Belgian candy sugar because I'm about to make a Belgian triple. Um, why would you want to make your own Belgian candy sugar? I don't want to go to the homebrew store. It's cheaper. All of these things. Um, apparently spending an hour making candy sugar is more worth my time than actually going to the homebrew store. Whatever. My brain doesn't work normal. Anyway, so I'm going to show you guys how to do it. Um, it literally requires three ingredients, water, sugar, and a food safe acid. I'm using cream of tartar. You can also use lemon juice, whatever. First things first, you need to measure out essentially how much candy sugar you want in the end. So like if your recipe calls for a pound, then you could make a pound. Um, I'm going to make like four pounds, I think, because I think there's about five pounds in here and I am nervous about leaving myself zero sugar. Um, so I've got my handy dandy thermometer. Nope, that's not a thermometer. That's a scale. You basically grab all your sugar and then you just put as much water in as will dissolve it. You want it to be pretty thick because you're going to have to boil off all the water anyway. And then it's about um, one gram of cream of tartar per kilogram of sugar. So we're basically going to put like two grams of cream of tartar in just because that's quick math. That's two pounds. And another two pounds. Alrighty. Um, I'm gonna try to use as little water as possible. So the trick to this is like not burning your sugar water. Um, you want it to kind of dissolve a little bit beforehand. And then you warm it up and try not to burn it. I could have probably even used less water. All right, so that's what it looks like. Until we heat it up, it's not gonna be clear. We're basically making simple syrup first, and then we're going to create the candy sugar. We're not putting the cream of tartar in until the second step. This is the first step. So we're just gonna heat this on low until it's all dissolved. And then we're gonna add our cream of tartar, and then we're gonna heat it between 230 and 260 degrees. And you'll need, like most of you guys, have thermometers because brewing um, this one's kind of like a candy sugar thermometer so you can just sit it in there as of a meat thermometer i was going to use if i didn't find batteries for this but i found some so all right um so i'm just going to turn my stove on and try not to burn this shit. i guess i should measure out my cream of tartar while we wait i'm making a huge mess don't do it the way i'm doing it there we go two grams I'm the worst person to be making this because I have an aversion to stirring things consistently while they're on the stove. I have a very big habit of just walking away and forgetting that I'm cooking. So this is going to be a challenge. So we're going to dissolve all this sugar and basically let this be clear. It'll turn into simple syrup and uh, add our cream of tartar and that will invert the sugar and basically make it be able to be candy. And then we will heat it between 260 to 275 degrees. Uh, Belgian candy sugar is like glorified hard candy. <laughs> but who doesn't like a good hard candy? Okay, now that this is boiled, it's officially clear if you can see that. So now we're gonna add our cream of tartar and attempt to get it all mixed in. So we're sitting at 228 degrees right now. And I'm gonna just turn it up so we can get to that sweet spot between 260 and 275. And once we're there, I'm gonna set a timer for 20 minutes because I'm making clear Belgian candy sugar. But if you wanna make darker, you just basically keep it at between 260 and 275 for longer. Um, going wisdom is that if you want an amber, you do uh, 40 minutes cook time, and if you want like a dark, you do 60 minutes cook time. But I like a light colored Belgian beer, so I am not gonna do that. 
So one thing I wasn't anticipating is how hard it is to get it up to 260. Um, it's creeping. And I'm on as high as I can go on my stove. So I might have to turn it to the middle burner. I think that one's got more gas output, but Jesus. Okay, we are at 268 now. So we finally got up to temperature. Covering it a little bit was the trick just to keep down the air getting into it and making it colder. So I'm gonna set a timer for 20 minutes and just keep this below 275 but above 260. It's very thick. All right, we are done with our 20 minutes. I'm gonna turn off my heat. One thing I just had to do because I'm that kind of person is use these little silicone molds that I have for dog treats to make candy. So I'm just gonna scoop it in. I have owls and skulls and rats because I got them for Halloween. All right, so these are gonna be fun shapes, obviously. And the rest I'm just gonna throw on this parchment paper and let it dry. You can also use aluminum foil if you don't have parchment paper. I randomly decided to buy parchment paper for the first time in my life for no reason the other day, so now I have a reason. Now I think I'm gonna have to boil water in this to actually get all the sugar off of it. All right, well, this should dry in a couple hours and I'll see you guys back then and I'll, when you can break it. Here's batch two of the Belgian candy sugar. Uh, I don't know how to make it clear. If you guys have tips, let me know. I think it'll be just fine. Uh, I'm gonna go make 20 gallons of Belgian triples with three different yeasts. I hope you like this video and like and subscribe. Bye. My little molds totally turned out. I have a rat, a skull, crossbones, and an owl because Halloween, I guess.